What is going on guys, it is Venom Surge here and welcome back to another episode of Elder Scrolls Online. Today is actually not going to be part of my normal series. Normally I check out individual sets at random and they most likely will end up being a crappy set that nobody uses and I attempt to make a fun build out of it. Today we're actually doing something a bit different. With the many changes to how heavy attacks and everything works, heavy attacks are freaking powerful. Now some of you may know that the restoration staff actually hits the hardest right now. However, this build is using a lightning staff because I don't exactly want to go around in a dungeon heavy attacking individual mobs. I'd rather attack the entire group and nuke them down. So starting with our first set, I am using Sergeant's Mail. So before we talk about the changes to it, this comes from Wayrest Sewers on number one or two, and you can do it on vet or normal, none of that matters. This gives you max health, health recovery, both of which we don't exactly need, spell damage, which is what we're focused on, and then when you deal damage with a heavy attack, you gain a stack, up to four stacks maximum, and each stack gives you an extra 645 damage to your heavy attacks. So this adds up to about 2.6. Sergeant's Mail used to give you 3k all the time, so it did get a nerf. Basically all of the sets that increases your light and heavy attack damage got a nerf. Now this is a heavy armor set, so we are using this on the weapons and the jewelry, but I'll go over the entire setup after we check out all the sets. So next up, I am using Noble Duelist. This is a light armor set that you can get from Blessed Crucible. This gives you stam recovery. It does actually help with this setup spell damage spell damage and then each time you deal damage with a lighter heavy attack in melee range you have to be in melee your heavy attacks against monsters specifically are increased by 2.1k for 15 seconds once every 12 seconds so this used to be 2.7k to everybody you still had to do it in melee range but it was 2.7 if we take a look at my notes here, these are actually all the sets that I looked up on the UESP website that involved helping you with heavy attack damage, specifically heavy, not looking at light attacks. Now Reliquin doesn't increase your heavy attack damage, it just does damage. Kinraz gives you Major Berserk which helps with everything, but we don't have many skills that we're using since we're primarily focused on heavy attacking and so it actually didn't do as well. So down here, these were the best ones that I found from the UESP website before they got nerfed. On the UESP skill calculator, which I'll leave a link down below or in the, up in the card at the top right, I tried out these three different combinations. And as you can see here, Infallible and Noble were the two best combination. But once I got onto the PTS, which we're on right now, Noble and Infallible did about 9k less than the calculator said it would, but actually Sergeant's Mail and Noble gave out the best on a crit. And I've actually seen on a boss, I've seen this crit for 50k on a normal boss in a dungeon and I don't even have major breach. So these things can hit hard. So this is going to be going across the entire body. This is also going to be on the shoulders because we are using the Oaken Soul Rain. Now this is an option, this is from the High Isle DLC and you'll need the Greymore DLC to scry this, but yes it did get nerfed, however they changed it so now it has Minor Slayer, Minor Aegis which will help us in any PvE content, but most importantly it gives us Empower. So that means we do not need to rely on trying to use sets or skills to get this. So we can just heavy attack all day long. So because of that, we don't have a full monster set. So we are just using a one piece of a medium monster set that just gives you crit chance. That's all we need. And if you want, you can also just use the head of the noble duelist and then just buy a monster set shoulder piece. So our setup is a lightning staff that's precise with the flame damage enchant on our only bar medium helmet. One piece of sergeant's mail will have to go on the body, so I would recommend putting it on the chest. That'll give you the most armor out of all the slots. And then noble duelist all the way down. All of its max mag divines. On the jewelry, everything's infused, spell damage. Now for our stats. 
feel free to pause the video to take a look at the stats. We are using 64 attributes into Magicka, and we are using the Thief Munda Stone. This is because our crit chance was not high enough to get to use the Shadow Stone. So as you see here, we are using the Thief, and we only get 20% extra crit damage right now. So if you decide to swap out one of the sets for something that's more crit focused, then you might be able to get some more crit damage out of this build. And then this is our stats buffed up. The only things that really go up is our max health and then actually our spell crit as well as our recoveries. And now for the consumables. I am currently using the Ghastly Eyeball. This gives you the most max mag you can get as well as mag recovery. If you need more max health, you can use the Witch Mother's Potent Brew or if you're rich and you want everything, you can use the Clockwork to get all the resources you need. For the potions, we're just using the Tristat Potion since the Oaken Soul Ring gives us everything else that we need. And now for the skills. So we are a sorcerer. So going down into the storm calling, we are getting critical surge. This is our one and only heal. I'll show you guys some other options as far as survival and healing goes. But from the testing I've done, this is perfectly fine for normal dungeon content, especially solo. Harder stuff, you might need to swap some stuff out. So when you hit this, you gain Major Brutality and Sorcery, which we already get from the Oaken Soul Ring. But while active, every time you crit, once a second, you heal for 3.6k, and that healing can also crit. Next up in the Destruction Staff line, we are using Unstable Wall of Elements. Even though we're not using the Maelstrom Staff and we don't have a weapon damage enchant or anything like that, it is still nice to get more AoE DOTs out there to get more DPS and pressure on the enemies. This does 1300 damage every second and then explodes for another 5.4k. Since we're using the Lightning Staff, we actually get a little bit more damage since it's AoE. And if enemies get concussed, we can set them off balance for 7 seconds. Next up in the Mage's Guild line, we are using Inner Light. Normally, you would use Camouflaged Hunter in the Fighter's Guild. However, while slotted, this also gives you 5% more max mag. And with the passives in the Mage's Guild as well, your heavy attacks actually did more damage with this slotted than the Camouflaged Hunter. Now, this also gives you the crit chance stuff, but we already get that from the Oaken Soul Ring. Next up, we are using the Twilight Tormentor. When you hit this, it deals 2k shock damage. And then if you hit this again, once it's already been summoned, it deals 60% more damage to enemies above 50% health for 20 seconds. It's a reverse execute. You want to keep this up as often as possible. Now, this is also one of your options. If you're struggling for healing, the other morph of this, the Twilight Matriarch, when you hit this, it does deal less damage, but when you hit this, you can heal for 15k. So it is a great insta heal. There's also some other options that I'll go over later. Next up in the dark magic line, we are using crystal weapon. This is why that stam recovery is nice. This is our spammable and it's stam focused. When you hit this for six seconds, you can do two light attacks or two heavy attacks and you deal extra damage and you reduce the target's armor by 1k for 5 seconds. The first hit deals 9.3k and the next hit does 3.7k. After you cast this, any normal skill we used within 3 seconds costs 10% less. For our ultimate in the fighter's guild line, we are using Flawless Dawnbreaker. You hit this for very cheap, only 106 ultimate. You deal 14.8k damage and an additional 17.8k damage over 6 seconds and your spell damage is increased by 300. This is also great for passives that we'll go over later. However, if you don't want to do that, you could also do something like the Suppression Shield. It negates enemies and deals a lot of damage, or you could also do your Storm Atronach. Now, for other spammables or just damaging skills, you could also do Daedric Tomb. They did nerf this, however. The mines cannot go off on the same enemy instantly. It goes every two seconds, but it still does a lot of AoE damage. They also buffed Daedric Prey, so this does a lot of damage, and your pet deals even more damage to the target. And if you need some protection, you could do Bound Aegis, 
We already get minor protection from the Reen, so that's wasted, but while slotted, your max mag is increased by another 5%, and you get minor resolve, which the Reen doesn't give you, so that stacks. You could also slot a ward as well. Now for the CP. In the green CP, nothing really matters. I'm just using the Steed's Blessing to get more movement speed outside of combat, Treasure Hunter to get better items in chests, Gifted Rider for more mount speed, and War Mount to negate mount stamina costs outside of combat. In the blue tree, getting down here to Fighting Finesse to get more crit damage since we're very low on it. Into the Extended Might tree, we are getting Weapons Expert since we are focused on heavy attack damage, we get 20% extra more right there. Then we're coming up here to Biting Aura to get more damage done with our AoE, which I think should affect your heavy attacks since they're AoE. And Thaumaturge to increase damage to your DOTs, which would hopefully also do it to your heavy attacks. I'm not entirely sure about these two, but they do for sure help your wall of elements. In the red tree, we're coming over here to Fortify to get more armor, and Boundless Vitality to get more max health. Down here to Expert Evasion to get a free roll dodge once every 30 seconds, and over here to Siphoning Spells so that way we gain 1500 magicka every time we kill an enemy. But you have to get the kill, but there's also no cooldown. Now for the passives, I'm only going to cover the passives that really affect this build. All passives do affect your builds in many ways, these are just the ones that would really affect the playstyle. Unholy Knowledge will help your sustain with non-core combat abilities. Each time we use our crystal weapon spammable, we're going to heal for 2.4k. If you happen to block an attack, you get to have better sustain on any ability. Exploitation is a must. Every time you cast your crystal weapon, you gain minor prophecy. That's how we actually increase our crit chance even further. The ring doesn't give you this. And it's you and your entire group for 20 seconds with no cooldown. Keep this up. In the Daedric Summoning line, you want to get reduced the cost of your ultimate by 15%. That is amazing. Daedric Protection is also great if you're using a Daedric ability. Expert Summoner is great if you actually have a pet specifically. It has to be active on yourself and the pets are constant. That's how we increased our health by another 2k. In the Storm Calling, Capacitor is great for more mag recovery, Energize to get more damage done by 5%. Amplitude is another reverse execute, so between us and our pet, we're reverse executing people. And then Expert Mage will increase our spell damage for each sorcerer ability slotted by 2%. In the Destruction Staff tree, you want to get Tri-Focused as soon as possible. This is what makes our Lightning Staff Heavy Attacks AoE. All enemies nearby take 100% of the damage done, so we can just sit there, hold AoEs, and do massive damage. Elemental Force is also great to have an increased chance to apply status effects. It does not mean you have a 100% chance to do it, it just means whatever the number was, it is now doubled. Ancient Knowledge is also great so that way your AoE abilities are increased by 10% since we're using a Lightning Staff. Now in the Light Armor Tree, Evocation is great to help your sustain for recoveries and to reduce the cost of abilities. Spell Warding lets you get more spell resistance, Prodigy gives us more crit chance, and Concentration gives us more penetration. We are using one piece of medium so it does help to get more crit damage done to get more spell damage. We are also using one piece of heavy armor so we get more resistances, more recovery and resources, more max health, gain more resources when we heavy attack, and get more healing received. Into the Fighter's Guild line, this is why we have the Flawless Dawnbreaker and why I at first tried the Camouflaged Hunter is because of Slayer. You gain 3% spell damage for each Fighter's Guild ability slotted, but the reason why Inner Light did better is because of this passive. You get another 2% max mag and some mag recovery, but max mag is important. So that means we actually get 7% max mag for having this slotted, and since we already had a lot of max mag, the increase from that was higher than the spell damage increase from the Fighter's Guild. Now, if you happen to not want to use the Oakensole Reign, or if you don't have it, get this passive. This will allow you to have in power once every 10 seconds and keep it up. 
but that means you have to be hitting a skill so i would probably recommend doing degeneration so you can get your sorcery although you already get that from this skill so maybe you use fire rune or equilibrium do one of these skills you might even hit inner light it's not gonna do anything in pve but you're gonna get that in power in the Undaunted, this is actually very helpful since we're using one of each armor, we gain 6% more max pools. And then Undaunted Command gives us more resources when we synergize. Now we are a High Elf. Each time we activate ability, we gain resources. And if you're channeling or have an ability with a cast time, you take 5% less damage. But the big thing is we gain 2k more Magicka and we gain 258 spell damage. In the alchemy line, get medicinal use. This allows your potions to have 100% uptime. Even if you're using the Oak and Soul Rain, the potions are still going to help you keep your resources. Okay, so now for the rotation. So the idea is to be based around heavy attacks and then making sure your crystal weapon is up at all times. Now, the crystal weapon goes for two things. You can do two light attacks and now it's done. So you have to hit it again, or you can do two heavy attacks. And then it's done. We have four skills, but the crit surge is every 30 seconds and the tormentor is every 20. So really, it's all based around your crystal weapon and wall of elements. Now, it is not a perfect setup because there's so many weird timings with heavy attacks and with the crystal weapon. There's many times where you're about to finish a heavy attack and then something drops off. So do you continue your heavy attack to get the damage or do you stop it to put your buff or your DOT back up? So it might be worth it to swap the unstable wall of elements for something that's longer duration or just something that you can slot such as a fighter skill ability for more damage. But here's what I do. I put my crit surge on. I would hit the tormentor, but I'm keeping it turned off for now so we can stop fighting when we want. You hit your crystal weapon, you heavy attack. You can actually Q right there. You can Q skills after heavy attacks. So I'm heavy attacking, I hit crystal weapon. It automatically proc crystal weapon right when the heavy attack ends. And then your heavy attacks can start almost right away afterwards. So I never let go of my trigger. I'm just holding it down. You just alternate heavy attack, crystal weapon, heavy attack, skill, heavy attack, crystal weapon. This allows you to do your two heavy attacks for your crystal weapon while keeping your skills up. But that's where you'll have the awkward timing with the shorter duration skill. So what we're going to do is we keep our crit surge up. When I'm entering a fight, crit surge, tormentor, turn on the crystal weapon. I enter, hit wall of elements and go into a heavy attack. Crystal weapon, heavy attack, wall of elements, heavy attack, crystal weapon. Heavy attack, Tormentor. Heavy attack, Crystal Weapon. And look, our Wall of Elements dropped off. But the amount of damage we do from our Crystal Weapon and Heavy Attack is so much that it's more worth it to follow through the Heavy Attack. Now, sometimes it might be better to just proc it early. So you can see, this is a very simple rotation. But as you see here, I actually ended up getting 66.6k DPS on the trial dummy with this rotation and it could be fine tuned so you don't drop stuff off. If you don't want to use the Oak and Soul Ring, it might be that it's better to use actual DPS sets that would increase your skills more than just your heavy attacks. Okay, so let's look at the DPS that I just did here. So this was while explaining, so you can see here I was doing my explanation stuff, and then I actually started going. We hit some spikes around 50k, that's probably where the bigger crystal weapon procs. And then there's some small areas where we drop off there. But I mean in general here it's looking around between 30 to 50k. I'd probably average around 40-ish maybe. 
this DPS line here kind of isn't true just because we didn't really focus DPS down on this end. Now if we look over at our actual numbers here, we actually hit him for 55.7k, another hit for 31k. On average these are our two hits and you can see like just from the DPS, I don't know which one is the final hit and which one's the charge. I'm assuming this is the final hit since it's the bigger burst and then this is your overtime hit with it. But as you can see it hurts and then your crystal weapon is doing about 10k to 11k on average so I mean it's doing very well just from these three things. And see the wall of elements is actually better than the crystal weapon but the crystal weapon gives you a lot more burst as you can see with the graph here. And if we look at my stamina it's not a problem at all. There's only one instance where your stamina is really going to be kind of screwed. Occasionally when I was in a dungeon testing this build out, just by how timing works, all three of my DOTs ran out at the same time. At that point, it's not worth it to just keep heavy attacking. You want to make sure they're still up. So I did light attack weaving to get all three of them back up. Well, you can only do two light attacks per crystal weapon. So that means light attack, crystal weapon, light attack, skill, light attack, crystal weapon, light attack, skill, light attack, crystal weapon, light attack, tormentor, light attack, crystal weapon, and then you're back into your heavy attacks. All of that is going to really shove your stamina down, but it happens very rarely. So we are going to take this into Castle Thorn. Now like I said, we only have one heal. We don't heal from anything else besides our, our crystal weapon gives us a little bit of healing. But we don't get a lot. Now we want to stay in heavy in melee range to proc that first set. But then we can just build up those stacks from the sergeant's mail and then we'll be good. We'll run up here, crit surge, tormentor, activate crystal weapon, wall of elements down, heavy attack. So as we heavy attack here and build up these stacks, you build one stack at the initial hit and one at the end of it. As you can see here, I mean we're kind of nuking them down. Even this big boy here, he has 230k health. And he died just as fast as the blood fiends. All right, so we're gonna do our normal setup here. Now you can still use your potions like normal. This is my technically my second time doing this video. The first time I did it, I uh, had audio issues, so. It always sucks having to redo it, but when I first did this, I struggled to remember to actually do my rotation. Now, every time they do like heavy attacks against me, that can screw you up because you can't heavy attack while doing that. So you may have to stop heavy attacking and maybe just do some light attacks or something. As you see, we're getting low on three skills there, so I just restarted all of them. And my stam did take that hit. You can also proc potions early. Obviously, I'm not going to stand in the DOTs. I will die by that, but crit surge is a very powerful skill. It alone is allowing me to do all of this. And just like that, he's dead. So overall, we're about 40k, although it does include the times where the enemies spawn in. So like, I don't think I actually hit that high just doing that. But we can see at least when we click on him, it is exactly about 31k. Before when I recorded the video, I was around 40k on the boss when I actually started building up on it. But as you can see here, even on him, 52k. And on average, we're hitting for about 33k. So I mean, it hits hard, and this is with the lightning staff. Yeah, the rest of staff is gonna hit hard too, but it's only single targets. 
Now, if we look at my stam here, initially I was doing pretty good, but between the heavy attacks and the occasional roll dodge and the misfiring of my skills, I did get very low there, but then I was able to bring it back up just by doing my normal rotation. So as long as you're able to do your normal rotation, you're going to be fine. And your Magicka is never going to get touched. Honestly, it might be worth it to just do a max mag food and a stam recovery food. You barely use your Magicka in this. So this gives me a kind of a better understanding of what my overall DPS was. So that there was a peak of 51. I think this is where my stam was getting low, but then brought it back up and it was averaging around 30 to 40k. Now, I'm not perfect with this setup. I don't like heavy attack builds that much, and I'm not great with heavy attack weaving. So as you can see here, I had wasted, I'm assuming these are seconds, about two seconds on unstable wall and crystal weapon. With unstable wall, usually I'm about like 0.3 to 0.2. So it, like very slow timings, but even with all of that, you can still hit pretty good average. And now for the outfit. For the helmet, we are using medium warm cold. For the breastplate, I'm using medium scale collar. For the shoulders, I'm using medium dead water. For the hands, I'm using medium morag tongue. For the waist, I'm using light ancestral high elf. For the legs, I'm using medium halalu. For the feet, I'm using light ashlander. For the staff, I'm using dead water. For the dark blues, I'm using the covenant conqueror blue. For the medium blue, I am using Ivea blue. And then for the white to the light blue, I'm using Stendar white. And I almost forgot on the staff, I am using Kolovian deep brown. And I'll go over the color slots. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. This was a pretty fun build for me. I don't normally do heavy attack builds, but it was kind of interesting to see just how much damage it can end up actually doing. And it, this may not even be the absolute best setup for just heavy attack damage alone. I know you can get higher DPS if you're throwing in skills as well, but just for heavy attacking, those are some pretty high numbers. If there's any other sets that you would like me to check out and try to make a fun build out of, please let me know down in the comments. It could be any build, especially any that are off meta, that is actually what I try to focus on. Feel free to check out my secondary channel, Venom Syndicate. Currently, I'm doing modded Minecraft with my best friend, but we also would love to get into some survival games. So if there's any other games you'd like us to try out, please let me know down in the comments. Like and subscribe to help my channel and the community grow. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you guys next time.